Moving on to The Simpsons. Nice little transition. Yes. Uh, a longtime actor on The Simpsons is weighing in on whether white actors should voice non-white characters. This has been everywhere recently. So you guys know Harry Shearer. He voices many characters in the show, including Mr. Burns, Ned Flanders, and Dr. Hibbert, who is black. But the actor told Times Radio that he disagrees with the show's decision to no longer have white actors voice non-white characters. So listen to his point of view. I think there's a, a conflation between representation, which is important. Uh, uh, people from all backgrounds should be represented in the writing and producing ends of the business. The job is playing the part of someone you're not. I'm not a rich nuclear plant owner. I'm not a, a Bible-believing Christian who lives next door to Homer. I'm not any of those people. I'm a little caught in between here because I don't know where I stand. I'd love to hear from you guys. Al what do you think about this whole, I can't play a certain, we, we saw Hank Azaria, for instance, who played a, a poo, say, I don't want to do this anymore. Now, a poo is super stereotypical, but Jenny Slate, Kristen Bell have also said, I'm not going to be playing any people of color in cartoons. Is that commendable? I like the fact that the actors are speaking out, Jeff and Tori, just lets us know that we're having the wrong discussion. The actors and actresses yeah. shouldn't be the ones to make that call. What's the, what the problem is, is like, the people that are doing the hiring, the people that are making the decisions, there's not enough diversity in the room. And that comes from a lot, sometimes that doesn't necessarily come from a bad place. If you are a white male and you went to a mostly white college, you grew up in a mostly white neighborhood, you have mostly white friends. So far, I've gone along, you haven't committed any crimes yet. You get to some position, you hire your friends. We just said, who are they? Mm -hmm. You went to college with a lot of white folks, you went to, college, you went to high school, you're, that's what your office is gonna look like. So when you start hiring other people from within that start as the interns and pages that you've talked about in four or five years those people are producers associate producers you know or senior producers at that point and they can make some calls and maybe say hey Tori I know you might not think about it what if we hired somebody that's in a wheelchair for this position that might be you Tori as a white woman because you've grown up with a mother who's been wheelchair bound so you would have perspective that I as a black man wouldn't have but we have to have different voices in the room and we just haven't had that and us relying on actors to kind of fall on the sword right. Right. I don't I don't know if that's the direction Jeff what do you think man and also Jeff don't you think that there could be colorblind casting like let's not know if they're black or white and find the best person for the job in some respects for voice acting yeah, definitely. I think Al hit the nail on the head. It's not up to the actors. Hank Azaria, Kristen Bell, it's very it's very commendable what they're doing, but they don't need any more income, right? What about someone who's already in that position and they have a dream job that they have to step out of that position? It, it, so I, I see both sides to this as you do, Tori, but I think it starts from a different place, not up to the actors like Al said. Where are you at, Tori? I, I just, I wonder if, <clears throat> excuse me, if, if a black person can only play a black part can a black person not then voice a white person's part, right? I just feel like it's very limiting when acting is very breaking down the boundaries. Now, I feel specific about a disabled person when there is someone who's disabled on the show that they at least try to find someone who's gone through that because they can't audition for other roles sometimes. But um, I find this a little too much, too, too over the top for me. Yes, but I mean, I don't, I guess his character was written like that. But you think about Peter Dinklage, his character could have been, you know, I don't want to use the word normal, like a normally proportioned yeah, human being. Yeah, normal size, yeah. Yes, but he, no one looked at that character and said, every time they watched Game of Thrones, like, wow, this is a little person. They were like, what an actor. He was incredible in the X-Men. He, his part never even referenced his physical dimensions. So I think that acting can overcome a lot of that. And I think, again, you need somebody to open the door, whether it's, hey, we haven't interviewed anybody with a physical disability. What if we interview somebody that was naturally blind for this part? Like, it may be, maybe they'd be terrible. Right. Good, great. Well, let's just see. You know, let's just see. Because the room hasn't even, even been open. And right. what you said is, if there is a mistake, Al, you were saying there's no one in the room if you don't have representation to say, hey, you know what? That's gonna really upset some people.